Hello, how are you guys doing today? Welcome back to ZooView. My name is Peter, and I'm one of the educational coordinators here at the zoo, uh, and one of the keepers here. Uh, this is your first time, welcome. It's just a little interactive thing for you guys to see some of the animals here while we are closed. Uh, get you guys some cool information on the animal themselves and some conservation ideas, and give you guys some time at the end to uh, answer some of your questions. Uh, if we do not get to your questions right now over uh, Facebook Live, we will do our very best in the next day or two to answer them in the comments. So today, uh, we're going to be talking about our ringtail lemurs. They're one of the more popular animals here. We do have two species of lemurs at the park. We have our black and white rough lemur down at the petting zoo. And then we have these guys, or excuse me, black and white rough lemur down by the reptile building. And our ringtail lemurs here are up in the petting zoo if you've been here before. Now. Ringtail lemurs are one of the most iconic lemurs out there, but there are actually 111 species of lemurs, and they all come off the coast of Madagascar. Now, Madagascar is a little island uh, to the right of Africa. Now, these guys, they are a terrestrial species, which means they do like to hang out on the ground much more than some of their other arboreal species of lemurs, which do like to climb. And they are most iconic for those stripes on their tails. So right here, we have our male Donnie, and we have our female Georgia, and our male in the back, his name is Ricky, and they all have 13 bands on their tail, which is one of the most iconic things that ringtail lemurs have. Now they do live in groups up to 25 called a troop, and in that troop there's a hierarchy system. So they will, there will be two uh, dominant male and females, and then everyone else will follow underneath. They do have a lot of vocalizations as well, chirps, calls, a lot of facial expressions as well. Now they are in the primate family, but they are not related closely to monkeys. They are called a possimian primate. Now, ringtail lemurs do a lot of different activities. They're a very active animal. Uh, as you see here, you might see in the video, they might be marking, which means they'll rub their back end and set glands along trees. They have set glands along their neck and wrist, and you might see them rubbing up against different things. Uh, since it is uh, May 1st, uh, we are uh, in warmer weather, so they are in their outdoor enclosure now. So they are remarking all the things that might have gotten washed away over uh, the winter. Now, if you saw in the beginning of the video, uh, they are target trained to follow this little ball. So you see some of them come over and they're like, hey, are we going to you know, train or not? Uh, because I do give them some fruit. Uh, so the idea of target training is really important uh, in the animal kingdom and in zoos. It's a way to enrich them. Uh, it's a way to get them stimulated. And then we can use this as our advantage. If we want to move them to a different part of an enclosure, we can target them across. If the vet needs to see something on their body, we could target their body in a certain way and have them move uh, to be able uh, for the vet to see that spot. And it's really good for them. This is targeting is one of the most basic trainings animals can do. Uh, and then we could build off of that. Uh, we could get weights on them by targeting them to a scale and other things like that. So we'll see if we get them to come over here. All right, guys. Come on. Come on. Come here, Georgia. Boy. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. There you go. Come on. So the idea is that they have to touch the ball. Uh, that's the action I want them to do. Uh, they have to touch the ball. And then the whistle is the bridge. So this is the reinforcer. Uh, that means they did the action I want correctly. If they touch a stick, they don't get the whistle. That's not what I need them to do. Uh, and they won't get the reward. And today, uh, it's banana. It's really easy for them uh, to get the reward. It's very fast. So they have to touch the ball once they're cued, and the whistle is the bridge. It's the kind of good job you guys did that correctly. Now, out of all 111 species of 
uh, lemurs, they are all you know, get are on the endangered species list. There's some that are least concerned, and there are some that are much more vulnerable. A lot of that is unfortunately due to habitat loss, deforestation, uh, and these guys are a lot due to the illegal pet trade. We're not training. So what you guys can do at home is to adopt a lemur, support a lemur. Uh, they only come off of one island, like I said, Madagascar, so there aren't that many across uh, the world. So support a lemur, adopt a lemur through different foundations. Uh, you could support uh, the Rainforest Protection Program uh, and also just stop the illegal pet trade of these guys because they're very cute and very sociable. Uh, so they're very popular, uh, unfortunately, as illegal pets. So being an omnivore species and a terrestrial species, a lot of times they will eat different types of plants, different types of fruits and veggies. They will, like I said, eat the tree bark. Um, today we gave them some pineapple and here are some of those biscuits again. Kind of the same ones if you saw the porcupines, a lot of them are the same. You want that? And then a big question with these guys is how can you tell the difference between these guys? Uh, well, their private parts and things that make them difference between male and female, unlike the last couple of animals we talked about, they're actually external. Uh, so you can actually see them uh, versus the other animals that we talked about, which are all internal. But Georgia is much smaller than the other two males. And between Donnie and Ricky, uh, their tails are a little different. Uh, Ricky has much more thicker black rings a lot around his tail, uh, while Donnie has much more thinner ones. You guys want to train one more time? Come here. Up. Sorry. Yep. Here. Good job. Come on. Over here. Nope. Nope. Right here. Right here. Good job. Oop. Good job. So you see right there, uh, which one is that? Donnie touched the stick, touched the stick, and then he eventually touched the ball, uh, which is the reaction we wanted. Now in the wild, uh, like I said, they live in those groups of up to 25. The females will take full control of those babies. Uh, babies will be born typically single. Sometimes they will be uh, twins. And they will actually sometimes be carried by mom in the mouth if they are too small to hold on. And then once they get big enough, about three to four weeks, they'll actually be able to kind of move on their own. And then about four to five months, they'll actually start venturing off by themselves, uh, still close around mom to where they are protected. And then after that seven month time frame, they'll actually be big enough to be kind of on their own. So they do grow pretty fast. So that is what we have for our lemurs right here. I'm gonna open it up to you guys if you guys have any questions about uh, ringtail lemurs, lemurs, uh, conservation, or anything else. Peter, Glenn would like to know if they have a favorite fruit. Uh, they really like bananas, uh, and they also are a big fan of uh, grapes. Ooh, I this way. <laughs> and Sarah wants to know how long uh, do they live? About 16 years. And how old are the ones we have right now? They're pretty young. Uh, so we got them from another zoo. Uh, so they are all under sexual maturity, which is about three years old. So they're probably right around that two or three year old uh, age range. Are they monkeys? They're not monkeys. They are related to monkeys. They're in the primate family, but they are not monkeys, even though they look like them. Come on back, guys. Peter Blake is asking, do they get along with each other? They do, Blake. Uh, just like at home, uh, you have different roles. Uh, your parents or guardians have a role. Uh, your siblings, if you have them, have a role. You have a role. Uh, same with these guys. Uh, so they are all about the same age, uh, but we do see that uh, Ricky uh, tends to be a little bit more dominant. Um, he will 
Uh, if he wants something, he'll go get it. But they all do get along pretty well, though. Can you pet them? They're a kind of skittish animal. Uh, as you see, even when they get too uh, close for us, uh, they don't really like to be touched and held too much. Uh, any of those videos or uh, people you see on TV that have them, uh, that are crawling all over them, uh, they were raised from a very small age. Uh, but being a uh, prey species, they're quite flighty, as you see, and they could jump pretty far and fast. Uh, they're not very one to like to be touched or scratched or held. Come on. Karen is asking what kind of predators do they have uh, to watch out for in the wild? Uh, large birds, sometimes some snakes. Mandy wants to know if they ever jump on you when you're in there. Uh, they will get curious. Um, they don't kind of spring off our shoulders, uh, but they'll get curious. They'll kind of touch our hand, touch our shoulder. See if we're sturdy enough. Is the park working on mating them? Everything is natural here. Um, we do not try to force anything. Uh, if they want to, they will. Uh, so they are not related. So if they do want to have a baby, um, it will be all up to them. Uh, and their mating season is uh, late fall. So um, when they do become sexually mature, it will be completely uh, up to them if uh, Georgia wants to be receptive or if the two males uh, want to breed with uh, her. All right. Um, if you guys have any other questions, uh, feel free to put in. Uh, but just like last time, uh, we have uh, For Good PA, uh, which is a nonprofit which helps all small businesses. Uh, so it's really important uh, at this time to go to uh, ForGoodPA.com, support all local businesses. You can buy one of our shirts. There are other ones uh, to help and support. Um, as always, uh, connect, protect, and change, uh, especially these guys. They come from one part of the world. It's really important that uh, these guys, as well as other species, are uh, looked out for because if we lose them, unfortunately, uh, we cannot get them back. Uh, so it's really important that we have uh, certain breeding programs with bigger zoos in place, that we don't do illegal foresting, illegal uh, um, logging, uh, poor uh, palm oil uh, cultivation, uh, that those places have safe farming and agriculture to make sure that our wildlife uh, stays protected and safe. And I think that is all we have, but I think the lemurs though, they did tell me right before I got in that it was someone's birthday, I think. So I guess they made this sign that I guess they knew it was someone's birthday. So happy birthday to whoever it was. I uh, hope you have a great day, and uh, thank you guys for coming now. And if you guys have any more questions, put them in the comments. We'll do our best to get to them. And enjoy the rest of your day. Have a great weekend. It's supposed to be really, really nice. Um, unfortunately, even though it is May 1st, we are not open. Uh, please continue to look on our Facebook page and our website uh, to find out when we will be open. Fingers crossed we're looking somewhere in the summertime, early summertime. Uh, but just keep looking back and uh, come back uh, for another zoo view sometime next week. All right, guys? Uh, have a great day, and see you later.